All right. I think I am recording it. Okay. Anyway, um, so here's my here's my uh, uh, almost zero uh, side effect plan. Okay. So we were down to to less than four percent. I don't know what your experience is with the BPC and B six. Um, you know, the, uh, the big pharma company says that 44% of the patients can't take this without, um, without some, some side effects. They have 44% discontinuation rate. Um, I don't know what your, what's your experience? I, you know, um, uh, we're using so much terzepatide now, uh, that, um, we're not having any, we're not having any, any side effects virtually none with terzepatide. Okay. Are you um, are you doing a, a, a weekly or are you doing it as a the five day a week? Uh, so for the um, we're doing a combination for the disapatide patients, it's once weekly. For the semaglutide patients, um, uh, um, you know, we're still we're still microdosing it. You know, still over right. five. Days. Okay, I like that better actually. You know, you know, first of all, it's different than anyone else is doing, um, and uh, so. Um, the uh, so this is this is the sort of the main screen that I have here, and what it what it has is um, a little bit of uh, what each of the components is. So here's your semi-glutide, um, BPC one fifty seven and B six. Um, here's the combination, and two tenths of a cc five days a week. Uh, sub Q. So that's, that's, you know, when I tell the patients it comes uh, you know, already pre-mixed, but this is the information we have. Um, we, we encourage, we don't make them do it. We encourage them to use a AMPK, which as you know, is the energy uh, regulator. Um, the one we like is from, there's two of them. There's one from um, Life Extension. Um, and the other is a pill. It's a little bit of a, it's kind of a big pill. Um, the other one is uh, liquid from Quicksilver. Uh, the main ingredient in it is gynostemma in it. It's a Chinese herb. And um, it'll give you a little bit of energy. It's not like speed. It's not like, uh, it's not like um, uh, phenamine. Um, but it'll give you a little bit of energy. And we, we, we encourage that for maintenance also. Um, we have the body site program that we use that, that that's, that's, we, we use for diet. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen that. Um, if you want, hey, huh? hey. yes, sir. Have you seen that at all? Yes, I have. It's great. Yes, yeah. Sir. Do you guys use that or not? We, do. we sure do. Yes, okay. sir. So, you know, they have a semi, they wrote a semi glutide program, you know, around, you know, the weekly shot. Yeah, but, I, I, um, I saw that. So what do you think about that diet? Um, you know, it's paleo diet. It's fine. Um, paleo diet, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's fine. Um, and then actually, you know, I did I did a, a talk for them the end of June, and that was when just when terzepatide, you know, was kind of coming out. And I said, well, you need to do one for that. And so a couple of weeks later, they they came out with one for that also. I don't know if you knew that or not. I was not aware of that. No. Yeah, wow. yeah. You go look in the in the in the uh, in the second column there with the plans where it's you know the ones that that aren't don't aren't you haven't published yet on your own. Uh, um, uh, account and you'll find one in there for terzepatide. So, so I like that a lot. It saves us a lot of money. We don't have to, we don't really need a nutritionist, you know? Um, so we, we send that out if the patients want it. Um, I don't charge them any extra for it. Um, for, um, and they're also, by the way, in there, there's a video on, um, high intensity in interval training. So you can add that in too. When you when you set up the patient's account, and then I <laughs> I, I try to encourage them to do some exercise. Um, uh, so these uh, these are oldies. Uh, I don't know if you're you're old enough to remember uh, two eight minute abs, eight minute legs. Remember it? Remember those buns of steel? No, uh -uh. no. Okay, so those were popular in the eighties and nineties. Um, those were like the VCR tapes. Those were like the first video, you know, video at home. Uh, Richard Simmons has one that's 13 minutes that's uh, sweating to the oldies is an aerobic. Um, they're kind of campy. They're fun. And the exercises are fine. 
So that's what this is here, this eight minute abs, eight minute legs. And um, they're, you know, they're, they're kind of fun. I'll show you, I'll show you one of them if you want. Um, okay. Um, for a sweet tooth killer, I use uh, apple cider vinegar. Uh, what I saw in the compounding pharmacy uh, the other day, um, uh, um, apple cider vinegar um, gummies. They're huge, thick, gee whiz. They're, you know, um, I mean, I, I, they had them sampled when you chew one it it that tastes like, um, I mean, they mix it with a little like uh, sucralose, um, but it definitely tastes like you're biting into a, you know, apple cider vinegar sandwich. <laughs> yeah, so. I, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I, you know, I, 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 I still go, I go back to the original. You know, there's lots of apple cider vinegars now, you know, by Bragg's that are flavored. So, but I tell the patients not, not to do that not to use the flavored ones i mean there's a honey flavored one you know it's got calories in it so yeah yeah so you know you know, that kind of defeats the purpose um and so two tablespoons and six to eight ounces of water use the non-flavored apple cider vinegar and whenever they're they get a you know a, a sugar cravings <laughs> it works reasonably well for most people um i don't know what do you guys use we don't, sir. This, this is this is great information. We we don't we don't use anything. Like okay. That. And now for maintenance, you know, so you know, if you go on YouTube, there, you know, there's a complaint a day about this stuff. It's this, it's that, it's no good, it's terrible. It's, you know, there's Ozempic face. You've heard of that, right? Do we talk about that? Yeah. What is what, what exactly are they referring to, sir? They're referring to you lose weight. You're gonna your your thin face is gonna get thinner. You're gonna have wrinkles. <laughs> That's what they're referring to. <laughs> How about Ozempic finger? That's another one. <laughs> no, I haven't heard that one. What's that one? <laughs> uh, well, you lose weight, your th your fingers get thinner, and your rings are going to fall off. Oh, jeez. So when we're done, when we're done this, I'll, I'll, I'm going to go. I'll show you. Uh, I'll go to my because I, I I put a few others in there. Um, that you know that's why you can't have nice things. So for maintenance. It, again, on YouTube, and I've not really found it much for for weight loss, but berberine um is is actually if you type in nature's ozempic berberine comes up so um 400 milligrams and it has the gyno stem in it the, the one we use that's for from uh new medica um but you need a lot you need two twice a day and then resveratrol um 250 milligrams two and we use the liquid from apex okay okay and then that it's it's more for maintenance um then for weight loss but but the way we dose this the the daily one here um we have we have them use uh, uh they can use uh two bottles which is 10 weeks then we tell them to take two to four weeks off uh i don't know what your experience is but mine is that the patients can get used to it and accommodate it and then it stuff doesn't work um so you need to have them take a break. So we use the resveratrol and berberine in between. They can also use that AMPK, this one up here. So that's um, that's kind of it, really. It's pretty simple. Uh, the the latest complaint is that you lose muscle and you can, you don't gain it back. So if there, someone's concerned about losing muscle, we we um, we recommend creatine. Yeah, sure. Okay, you know this, right? You know this better than I do. <clears throat> okay so then i didn't plan on doing this but this is fine um so little tips for success so if they're doing the weekly shot we tell them that you do it on wednesday thursday or friday um when they're off the next day or two this is for the weekly shot um and then so that way if they do get sick you know um they're you know they have a couple of days to recover okay um uh, the people that, that seem to get sick are ones who overeat, even though, you know, the 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 medication tells tells their brain they're not hungry or they're eating a lot of junk food. So they kind of have to listen to their you know system and not and not eat and not eat, you know, the way they're, they're normally nor, normally just go until they're not hungry anymore. Most of our patients decrease their appetite, or decrease their intake by uh, up to three quarters of their daily calories. And again, I don't know if that's your your experience, um, uh, but that's ours. Okay, and then this is the key. This 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 was the game changer right here. 
You still there with me? Oh yes, absolutely. This is the game changer right here. So art. So the so according to to the to the drug company that on, on the straight Ozempic, they have forty four percent of their patients discontinue the medication due to side effects, especially nausea. Ours was less than four with the BPC and the um, and the uh, B six and you know the and the micro dosing. Um, we now have got. We've been doing this now for three months. And I think I have two patients in the last three months have called and said they couldn't take it. So th it's almost it's almost zero. And what we have them do is we have them get fresh ginger. Um, we tried we tried the ginger pills, you know, uh, supplement that didn't work. I have a few people saying that they're they're they're, they're using um, a ginger tea, and the, I, I don't know about that uh, about that. But fresh ginger, you know, the stuff you get in. Uh, in uh you know the japanese restaurant the, the slices yes okay um we have them tell them to chew on that when they're taking their shot and then if they start feeling a little bit sick or nauseous and this is like um it, it stops at cold um it's it's like a, it's like a like a it's unbelievable <laughs> um and uh like i said i've had two patients in, and we're doing five a day at least i don't know how how you guys are doing um we're get we're getting five at, at at a minimum five five patients a day, and they're calling from all over. I mean, I'm, I got people calling from from uh, I got somebody from Australia. <laughs> she <emailed me> one. <laughs> so, okay, how much and and what what's your cost structure? Um, so we're charging four twenty five for the semaglutide mm -hmm. for, for the five cc bottle, and we we also we, we include the the the, the body site program in it. Um, if we do the weekly shot, um, we um, we we charge them uh, one twenty five um, for for the terzepatide. We're charging five ninety nine. Five ninety nine. Okay. Yeah, and that's um, you that's know five ninety nine a month. Uh, well, it'll it, the, the bottle will last five weeks. Five weeks. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we tell we tell we show them how to how to take the metal ring off so they get every drop out of the bottle. Okay. Oh, that's. <laughs> well, we learned that from the Botox. You should know that from Botox. Right. That is awesome. I never thought about that. Jeez, yeah, yeah. You take have them use it. Uh, if they don't have a hemostat, most people don't. They just take a, a small needle nose pliers and just pry off the the metal ring, and then they they get the needle all the way into the bottle and they can get every drop out. Okay. Okay. So that's that's the way we do it. Um, six to eight, six um, to eight uh, glasses of water a day. Make sure they don't get dehydrated. Um, that happened with the HCG and and the uh, liquid protein diets we used to do. Um, so you want them to not not get dehydrated. A half a teaspoon of sea salt or pink Himalayan salt in one of the glasses of water, um, and then they make sure they move a little bit. Okay, so pretty simple. Um, but this is the key. So now you've learned, you've learned the 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 the, uh, the 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 secret sauce right here. Without the BPC, I don't know how, how it's going to do. I'm wondering if I can if I can inject a little bit of it in, 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 into the bottles with the, with the stuff I have. Well, so. I'm I'm curious, sir. Do you have um? Are you using NAD at all? Uh, in terms of like injections, um, you know, NAD. Um, if the patients ask not too much. I mean, I, it's pretty expensive. Yeah. Um, it's pretty tricky. I mean, you know, if you run it at a at a at a moderate rate, I mean, they get rapid heart rate and short of breath and all. And I, I don't want anybody coding on me in my office. Size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're giving it like um. <clears throat> there's a guy in um um who has this um uh just really I, i'm gonna i'm gonna share all this with you dr clearfield it's um a, a guy uh, his name is dr pet petaruli he's a he's a, he's a do um and uh in rhode island um he has this um he has a he has a, 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 a the company the website is called imed imed university um he's got an IV nutrition course um an IV ozone course um uh and um, an IV cancer therapy course, um, uh, you know, they're, they're, the bread and butter that they do is, you know, IV infusion. 
Um, mm-hmm. but, um, it removes all the fluff. Um, you know, um, the IV infusion course, he has 71 protocols, 71 IV protocols. Uh, not, uh, that's not, that's not even the cancer protocols that he has, but, um, you know, then they have a 797 standards course that teaches the clinics exactly how to put in a hood, um, how to fulfill all the requirements and standards, um, meet all the requirements for the, you know, pharmacy boards and, um, you know, um, just really, really, uh, you know, they have, you can do, a, you know, Skype consultations with them or Zoom, uh, good questions. But anyway, um, they're using, um, uh, you know, they, um, uh, they, they have an anti, uh, anti-aging anti infusion, um, just a comprehensive infusion that they're putting patients on monthly. And then in between, they put them on NAD injections, um, you know, like, um, you know, two injections a week, and they send them home with the injections. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, it, you know, they charge them $1,200, uh, for the, you know, for a three month supply and, uh, patients are buying it like hotcakes and they feel, uh, they feel great. So. All yeah. right. I'll take a look. Yes, sir. All right. Um, okay. So, uh, uh these are the complications according to the, uh, big pharma company that the percentages is of their, um, uh, that you see there are of, that that's the percentage of uh, 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 patients that um, uh, that they in their studies show uh, uh, the complications. So nausea is the worst, forty four percent, and most of those patients will take one shot and never take it again. Um, so our remedies here are follow the body site program for the diet, no junk food. Um, you know if they're going to be eating what like they're normally eating. Uh, they're going to be, uh, you know, they're, they're going to get sick. If they're eating, uh, you know, Doritos with Coke and, and, and French fries, they're going to get sick. I mean, there's just no way around it. Okay. Yeah, isn't that amazing how this medicine is instructed to the body. It's, it's, it's what yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, the fresh ginger is the game changer. That's, that's the key. Um, and there's a supermarket, well, you've been to my office. There's a supermarket less than a mile from Safeway, not less than a mile from my house that has it. And uh, they actually sent me, they actually called me somebody from there said, how come I keep sending people up there? And I said, keep it stocked. <laughs> so, um, so that's the, that's the fresh ginger. Um, Zofran and promethazine. I actually have done better with promethazine, you know, if we, as a medication than Zofran or, you know, uh, uh, whatever the, uh, I'm at this, the pr- tr- Tron, whatever it's, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, over the counter, um, Pepto uh, Bismol or Zinc Carnosine um, seems to help. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, we've tried Oral B6 and Oral BPC 157. It's uh, you know, the, it's kind of not you know. Somebody calls and says they're sick. They, 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 that's kind of hard to get. They have to. We had we do have some in the office, um, but. Um, I'm not so sure how effective that, at least the BPC-157 is. So, but the promethazine seems to work for it fairly well, and as does the zinc carnosine. Um, diarrhea, uh, make sure they're hydrated, make sure they, they have some fiber, um, and, uh, you know, you can use some Imodium. So, uh, and uh, these numbers I don't see in, in our patients. As I said, this is from the pharmaceutical company, by the way. Uh, vomiting, like nausea. Um, you know, avoid high fat foods. Um, again, promethazine, um, zinc carnosine, aloe, um, L glutamine also, and D glycerinated licorice. Um, we like ortho, it's ortho molecular's combination called um, Glutashield. Um, it's a powder. It actually tastes pretty good and it really, uh, you know, calms, the, calms down the GI tract. Okay. Yes, sir. Constipation, um, again, high fiber foods, uh, prunes, figs, uh, metamucil, magnesium citrate, Miralax, cod liver oil, um, magnesium citrate, uh, apple pectin, pectisol, aloe, and probiotics. The probiotics we like is either Saccharomyces boulardii or the spore-based uh, probiotics. So they're a little bit more expensive. We have orthomoleculars in our office. Um, it's a little bit less expensive than the, the mega spore. So abdominal pain, you know, there's a rare incidence of, of pancreatitis. I've never seen it, but you know, it's, it's in the literature. Castor oil packs, uh, absent salt baths, um, licorice root, 
if the patients, by the way, go back to Epsom salt baths, if the patients are taking N acetylcysteine or glutathione, um, after about six six months to a year, they're going to end up um, with it, it's that methionine pathway. That's how it's it's formed. They, they end up um, depleting um, molybdenum, you know, a, little, a trace mineral. Um, and a way to way to replace that is a, a once or twice a week Epsom salt bath. Okay, so someone on a long term N, N acetylcysteine or, or glutathione, um, you know. Make sure you you you. Because what'll happen is that the 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 the, the uh, chemical reaction won't 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 uh, won't uh, happen because you 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 end up they don't have the, they need molybdenum that you know as a sort of an enzyme, as a as a as a as a driver. It's not an enzyme. So the Epsom salts will actually replace the molybdenum, and it's you know it's one less thing you have to take. <laughs> um, licorice root. Um, uh, especially if they have some GI issues or uh, stomach ulcers, um, H. pylori. Uh, be careful with licorice root um, with high blood pressure. Uh, uh, black cumin um, uh, for nausea, gas, diarrhea. Also ginger, there's ginger again, and mastic gum. And mastic gum comes in a lot of uh, GI sort of calming. Uh, a lot of the companies make a... Uh, like sort of uh, upper GI, uh, like GERD um, uh, relieving uh, uh, remedies and that ma mastic gum is usually a part of that. Headaches, I, I patients don't really complain of headaches, uh, you know, from, from at least from the medication. Um, check their blood sugar, make sure they're, they're gluten-free. Um, can use peppermint or lavender oil on the temples. Uh, uh, arnica, feverfew, butterbur are um, you know, homeopathic remedies. B1, B6. Uh, uh, if you got them in the office, you can, you know, they come in, they have a headache. We can do our in that battlefield acupuncture. Did you get the needles, by the way? They still have not come in. <laughs> I don't know. I ordered them like three weeks ago. Do you ever get a delay? In, um, uh, in I never used to. Now we get delayed on everything. So, you know, it's comes if you got them from La Hassa, it's you know it's coming from Canada. So uh, I did. I did order them. I ordered like two boxes of those ask needles that you mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And then um uh, fatigue, you know, again, food sensitivities, leaky gut, uh magnesium, potassium, and stress reduction. So this is our um, you know, the what to do for these complications. And again, uh, I don't know, you know, you've been doing this a while with, with this formula. I don't know if you see, do you see any of these, uh, any of this? I do. Um, uh, but, you know, we're not, we don't use them in particular, but this is amazing uh, stuff. Dr. Well, I'm, I'm, what I'm asking is, do you see these complications, headaches, uh, fatigue? Yeah, um, uh, so the majority, the majority of uh, um, uh, side effects the report is just the, uh, you know, gastrointestinal side effects. The, those right. are the, things that people are complaining about not these other and i'm sure they're absolutely you know they absolutely exist and probably patients do complain about them but they're probably the it just seems they're overwhelming complaints that they call about is is the the nausea and vomiting and all right so we tell every patient when we start them about the ginger now okay so you're going to call me we're going to talk in a couple of months and you're going to tell me tell me what your experience is with it okay okay because you know, I'm prejudiced. I sometimes I make this stuff up. So I, I want to be right. So I bounce it off of you and a couple of my other students. If, do you uh, do you um uh if let's say that I, I'm I'm just so curious, Dr. Like um um I have I have a handful of patients that say, look, I can't take I can't take vitamins, you know, and 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 herbal preparations twice a day. I just can't. You know, I I, just, I can do it once a day. Tell right. you what I say once a day. So if they take if they take fifteen hundred milligrams of berberine in the morning, you know, uh, uh, religiously, you know, every day, are they going to get the you know pretty much the similar benefits? Uh, though, yeah, but they may get some side effects from taking you know that all that much that that you know all at once. So um, okay. if they're going to take that much, I would do it separately. From that, no, take it with anything else. Okay. okay. And just, okay. just just several sips of water. So recommend they take that kind of dose at bedtime uh when they go to sleep or... yeah mm -hmm. yeah so we do two two in the morning as soon as they get up and two in the morning as, as, and two two as they at bedtime okay 
Okay. And then I have a little bit a, a ditty there, what Beverine does and then resveratrol. Okay. Gotcha. So those, these are our maintenance. Um, these are our maintenance um, um, remedies. And I, like I said, these are not really for losing weight. These are more for um, just maintaining. Okay. And it, we, we seem to do pretty well with this. Um, so, you know, like I said, we, we for, for the micro dosing, the, 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 the five day a week shots, we have patients um, take a two to four week break after every 10 weeks. Um, so we, we recommend this and then when they're done and then also, you know, it said if, the, if, if I, you know, I don't know, we don't really measure, um, you know, muscle tone and what like that, but it, it's, you know, it's, that's another one of these non nonsense complaints, as far as I'm concerned, you, that you're going to lose muscle and it'll never come back. So, um, you know, that's, uh, the, um, uh, so we, like I said, we, we recommend the creatine for that. Um, and, uh, that seems to work out. Okay. Um, you know, I, I always think back to, uh, way back in the dark ages when I was in, in, in medical school and they told us, uh, uh, if you, if you give somebody a high blood pressure pill, it's for the rest of their life. Right. Have you heard that? Oh yeah. They still tell you that. Oh yeah. So back in those days, there were four high blood pressure pills, um, and four categories. There was diuretics. It was hydrochlorothiazide or um, or spironolactone, um, and then that was the first. That was either one. That was that was that was it. The second tier was um, uh, uh, alpha blocker, al uh, uh, um, aldamet. Um, the third tier was um, I want to say it's not guanfacine. It was uh, something with a G. Uh, there we go. There's my old, old timers disease. It'll come to me. Um, and then the fourth, if, if that didn't work, then we had to put them in the hospital and give them IV nitride, which is basically IV nitroglycerin. <laughs> um, that was it. That was, that's how you treated high blood pressure. Then there was combinations. There was like aldactazides. So that had, um, uh, spironolactone and hydrochlorothiazide together. <laughs> um, and then, um, and then there was um, Aldamet and uh, and uh, one of the diuretics together. Um, so they would have a combination. So I keep thinking back, if they're still around, if I gave somebody a high blood pressure pill, one of those in 1978, are they still taking it, you think? Under your care, no. You're probably, I told you, they're, 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 we're supposed to take, it's supposed to be for life, right? <laughs> so... <laughs> So uh, I, uh, I, I fully uh, expect that you, I'm sure, get them off of their medicine successfully. Yeah, we, we do. We do. The, we do the best we can. <laughs> OK. All right. So that's that's kind of how we do it. Um, you said you use the body site uh, program. Yes, sir. So you don't need to look at that. Right. But no, that's a great program. No, sir. I, I got that. Thank you. Um. So we, we, we jazzed it up a little bit. Um, here's my logo. I, I, you know, I don't even drink beer. I don't even know why I put that on there. <laughs> so they changed this around a little bit though. So plans. So the plans. So if you go to... Um, so the semi-glutide, you, you have this one, right? You know about this one, right? Semi-glutide weight loss. What, what exactly is that, sir? Well, this is the program. This is in the body site. Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. This yes. one you know about. Did you know, but did you know there was a terzepatide one also? Oh, I did not. No. Yeah. I'm not sure if I brought it, brought it forward or not. So, um, yeah, so the way the semi-glutide one, it's like it goes like for 70 days too. So it's it goes pretty long. And then a lot of times what I'll do is I'll add in, you know, they'll say, Do you want to you want to do it when you're done? You want to do another, another uh another uh uh 
program. So I'll put, I, I usually put in the paleo diet after, after that. So, okay. So you, this, this, you know about, right? So, yeah. So we, we like, we like this a lot. And, um, so, um, okay. Um, so what I was going to do, <laughs> if we're ready to change gears here, yes, sir. Absolutely. was um, uh, continue on. Uh, we did about half, we did about half of this. This is the talk I'm giving uh, in a couple of weeks at, at AMMG. All right, I sent you the video this morning, by the way. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, you know, when you get me on Friday mornings, as I, I have to, as soon as I'm done, I have to go run and get ready and go to work. So sometimes I forget, but Saturday I'll I'll uh, I'll be able to send it to you sooner. So, so uh, we were. This is where we were up to. Um, so we're talking about complications or 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 alleged complications from uh, uh, testosterone. So you know, testosterone raises uh, uh, red blood cell count. And it's a, um, you know, it, it's it, the knee jerk reaction for those who don't don't pay attention is they think it's a it's a polycythemia vera, which is a blood tumor. Right. Okay. So high testosterone levels do not increase the risk of blood tumors. All you need to do is look at a CBC. You look at the white count. You look at the platelet count. If they're normal, which ninety nine point nine percent of the time they are, then it, the, the erythrocytosis is from the testosterone. Okay, it's from in, increasing erythropoiesis. That's all. Increases EPO, um, and um, you get an average increase of about seven percent in three months and ten percent in six months. Um, you get an increase in hemoglobin and hematocrit about 45% of the time with the injections. So the testosterone injectable, about 15% of the time with the cream. So you get less of less incidence with the creams, transdermal. And um, you get, a, it's about, about the same as, as the injectable with the pellets, by the way. Okay. okay. Um, erythrocytosis is defined as hepatic or greater than 52. Now, where we live here, I don't know if, it, did you have any trouble breathing when you were visiting? Because, you know, we're at 4,500 feet here. No, sir. Um, wow. Yeah, so we're at 4,500 feet. Um, and so he, hemoglobin and hematocrits are, are naturally higher here. Yeah. Okay. Um, and here's the incidence of um, testosterone. I just told you, um, erythrocytosis, the transdermal 43.8%. and um, uh, 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 rather, um, injections, 43.8%, transdermal 15%. So, um, and it's dose related also. Okay. Let's uh, go here. Let's do this. Okay. Testosterone induced erythrocytosis. Erythropoietin levels are high with testosterone induced erythrocytosis. Testosterone levels, or rather, EPO levels are low if it's polycythemia vera. Um, it can remain um, uh, 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 elevated by for up to thirty by thirty percent, even six months after discontinuing uh, uh, treatment. Um, it does not change the white cell count, does not change the platelet count or the clotting factors. And uh, you know, we see a lot of the guys from the VA. The VA, every, they, they got a new young, a younger endocrinologist finally. The, the old geezer finally retired. Um, <laughs> thank God. Um, so he, he he's 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 bright enough to know that you don't have to send every every guy who who's getting testosterone and their hematocrits fifty. Um, you know, and I said it's it's naturally higher here anyway. He was sending them all to the hematologist for to, for bone marrows, and the hematologist was more than happy to do them. I, I was so funny, uh, you know. Um, your 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 uh, your quick humor reminds me of Dr. Rob Kamenarik. Okay? Uh, you know, he he was right. on, giving a, uh, on a seminar, uh, not too long, just uh, on one of Jay Campbell's shows, and he says he said if somebody knows the answer to this question, any physician out there, call me. Here's my number. 
why is it that every endocrinologist I see that talks about the, the horrors of testosterone replacement therapy is either fat or looks emaciated, like they need to go into the hospital? Right. <laughs> well, it's like... Um... You know, you know the 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 officials who told you 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 know you're going to die if if you don't take the the vaccine. You know, right. did you ever see Robert Kennedy Jr.? Did you see it? Ever see that picture of him with you know lifting weights? No, sir. No. The guy, the guy's sixty nine years old and he's 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 ripped like a like a like a uh, like a twenty year old. And yeah. uh, the, the ones telling you that you're going to die if you don't get the vaccines are all fat slobs. You know. So. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So, um, so the the reason you get the erythrocytosis is you get what's de you get a, a decrease in 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 a, in a uh, chemical called hepcidin, which is an iron regulatory peptide. It's inversely related to hematocrit production. Um, it's impacted by interleukin six, which, as you know, is a, an inflammatory cytokine. Testosterone inhibits in in, in interleukin six, which inhibits he hepcidin. You also get decreased ferritin levels. You get an increased iron utilization. Um, hepcidin is also inhibited by high uh, vitamin D. So really high vitamin D levels, you're going to end up with um, uh, you're going to get end up with uh, high uh, hemoglobin and hematocrits also. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Be on the lookout for that. So here's uh, remedies for it. You know, the, I mean, the ultimate remedy is a, um, a phlebotomy. Um, Increased interleukin six will increase hepcidin, um, and uh, you'll end. It's a partial remedy for erythrocytosis. So here's the way to do it: um, exercise, uh, two cups of coffee a day, high fat, high sugar diet. There you go. Uh, don't sleep. Drink <laughs> melatonin. Um, increase uh, T4, and you're going to get hepcidin. You're going to get issues with this with um, uh, vit low vitamin D. Um, zinc, magnesium, calcium, choline, supplements, uh, creatine, there's your creatine, 5-HTP, grapeseed extract, um, astragalus, and the reishi mushrooms, and of course, our favorite drugs, venophylaxin and fluoxetine. <laughs> okay, so um, those will, um, inc those will uh, increase hepcidin, and, and which is a, a partial remedy for erythrocytosis. Okay, so polycythemia vera. You know, this is the bugaboo. Everybody knows about this, right? Okay. Right. You take testosterone, your your hemoglobin goes up. You you have a blood tumor. This is a myeloproliferative disease. It's actually um, classified as a rare disease. Believe it or not, it's on the rare disease um, list. Um, have you ever seen this at all? I mean, I mean, no, it's, I've, yeah. I've never seen it. Never seen it in hormone replacement therapy. I mean, no. Every, every every medical person knows if you take testosterone, you're going to end up with polycythemia vera, right? <laughs> yes, sir. All right. So polycythemia is increased cells. So yes, you get increased red blood cells, but you don't get increased platelets and you don't get increased uh, uh, white blood cells. Uh, so tech, the technical definition is hemoglobin of 18 greater than 18.5, hematocrit greater than 53. You get thrombocytosis, so high platelets, high white count, and a high alkaline phosphatase. Um, this re increases your viscosity, increases your risk of blood clots. That's That was the worry with the increase in, in, in red blood cells. Um, but, you know, Lance Armstrong's hematocrit was 70. Um, you know, he was using erythropoietin and testosterone, um, mostly erythropoietin. Um, so you don't get strokes, heart attacks, um, leukemias with testosterone. 97% of these patients have genetic mutations in the JAK2 and TET2 genes. Testosterone, you don't get uh, any genetic mutations. And the, and the EPO, erythropoietin levels are low. Here are the symptoms, uh, fatigue, vertigo, increased sweating, facial redness, blurred vision, uh, itching, especially after a shower, you get mast cell, um, uh, elevated mast cells, histamine release, splenomegaly, gout, kidney stones. And then, you know, the, the, the clinical effects are strokes, heart attacks, um, uh, uh, blood clots in the legs, and this Budgieri syndrome in, in the liver. So, you know, they're very different. Um, 
the, the remedy phlebotomy, um, and um, you can use autogalous um, interventions, myelosuppressive in, uh, medications, so, so hydroxyurea. Um, I can never pronounce these, these, these biologics, <laughs> that ruxolitabid or something, you know, relief pruritus, antihistamines, hydroxazine, um, aspirin. Aspirin can cause itching, though. Um, you can get a burnout phase and it where, where you know the, it, it burns out the the um, the uh, bone marrow and then you're going to end up with needing transfusions. And so this is just the, these this is the the um, comparison. So on the right is erythrocytosis. This is your testosterone. On the left is your polycythemia vera. Polycythemia vera is a tumor. It's it's genetically um, um, it, um, driven. The erythropoietin levels are low. You can increase blood viscosity, um, and you have increased risks of heart attacks, strokes, um, uh, blood clots, blood pulmonary embolism, leukemia, um, erythrocytosis. It's red blood cells only, so hemoglobin hematocrit, no genetic mutations, high erythropoietin. Uh, you do get the increased red blood cells, but only the red blood cells. And um, you can get over fluid overload, um, but there's no blood clotting risk. If you have a patient, this is a big issue, and I cannot believe I forgot to ask you this, but big issue that a resident has arisen at Viking, um, you know, with a group of patients and just don't know what to do. So let's say you have a person, first generation history of, um, of uh, thromboembolic disease, um, or um, let's see a person with, uh, you know, who has a diagnosis of antiphospholipid uh, syndrome, um, but has not had, you know, uh, an extensive workup. So first category, um, you know, and you want to, you know, get a, you know, clotting screen. Through LabCorp, they're like $5,000. And um, so right now, you know, we're sending a bunch of upset patients to the hematologist and saying, you know, we'd love to treat you. You've fulfilled the criteria for testosterone replacement therapy, but we need, uh, we need a medical clearance from uh, a hematologist before we can start. Um, you know, uh, replacement therapy. Um, and a lot of these people live remotely, you know, they, you know, that takes, you know, 10,000 months to get into the, uh, you know, HEMA. Um, do you have recommendations on a reliable screen that is not going to make them get a second mortgage, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, could put us fairly in a fairly safe zone with respect to what, starting? What, what, what screening are you using now? For no. We don't. I mean, we were thinking about getting a Jack Two and a Factor Five light in, um, uh, but we just, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, when I mentioned these things and they looked them up, you know, the, you know, the Viking admin called, you know, called me back and was like, oh my gosh, these, these tests are a fortune. These patients are going to get so ticked off, they'll never come back, and you know, so, <laughs> so you know. Um I mean, you could just do, you know, just the the basic ones, uh, you know. Uh, uh, PT, PTT platelets. Um, uh, you can do a fibrinogen level, um, and you know just some of the basic ones. Um, okay. You know, again, if they come in and they're they're white count and they're and they're, you know, I mean, you should be doing that before you treat them anyway. If they're white count and their and their platelet counts are normal, um, you're not going to induce uh, polycythemia vera by, uh, uh, you know, by giving them testosterone. Yeah. Now, is there any, is there, do you know, is there any hematologic disorder, Dr. Clearfield? I just, uh, off the top of my mind, I can't remember that, um, you know, where a patient has profound risk of thromboembolic disease of exposed to testosterone, but yet the CBC doesn't present this way. No leukocytosis, no elevations in uh, um, uh, nonspecific systemic inflammatory markers like the ACFOS. Um, and they don't necessarily have significant elevations in the hemoglobin hematocrit, but yet if you give them testosterone, they'll throw a clot. Um, do any of the blood clotting disorders behave that way? Not that I know of, but that doesn't mean that the, the answer is no. Okay. 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 And, and here, well, here's, here's your answer, actually. Here's the next chart. Okay. So, um, this is, um, uh, Incidence of uh, strokes, heart attacks, and uh, blood clots. Uh, the first column is the, the, genera the general population. The second column is uh, polycythemia vera, and the third column is uh, testosterone. So as you can see, 
slightly increased from the general population with testosterone. Um, but, you know, a, a third of, of uh, uh, polycythemia vera and heart attacks, as you can see, you have less incidence of heart attacks with um, testosterone than, than uh, or, or nothing. Um, and then blood clots also less. And if you want to go by percentages there, you know, you see eight per a thousand with testosterone versus 10 per thousand, that's 20% uh, a decrease. So, so <laughs> I mean, it's two, but it's 20%, right? That's right. Yeah. So you can, you, you know, it's you can fool them there. So, there, so uh, I don't usually do, you know, do those genetic tests and whatnot. Um, and uh, have you been doing those or, or not? No, we just sent the hemo. Okay. And, and, and who are the ones that you're sending to to there to, to hematology? It's just the first generation history of clotting disorder. So, so like you know, mom and dad, you know, had uh, you know recurrent clots, um, uh, or you know they have a they have a remote history of um, you know of a of a blood clotting disorder, um, but no history of blood clots, but yet diagnosed with that and really no definitive yes or no from uh, a hematologist as whether or not that they could be, you know, you know, start testosterone. So the, this, this second category classic is a, you know, person that, you know, comes in and says, uh, well, yeah, you know, 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with APS and, um, uh, and I had no interest in testosterone placement therapy. I was younger at that time. Now I, you know, I feel tired and, you know, no erections and, you know, now my testosterone is low and I want to be put on testosterone. I haven't seen a hematologist in 10 years, um, but I have this diagnosis looming over me of uh, antiphospholipid, uh, you know, uh, syndrome. And so, and I know there's an increase for blood clots. That's what the hematologist told me. Um, uh, but uh, so, uh, so. Yeah, well, um, you know, according to this, I'm looking at this, it, it, they should be okay. Uh, but I will do some homework and get back to you on it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, not something that comes up very often, at least not in my, my uh, sphere here. So, okay. So um, testosterone is, is not associated with increased risks of incidence of uh, cardiovascular disease, uh, regardless of prior cardiovascular disease or not. So there's that. That's, that's what this, that's what on this page. Okay. Um, overall mortality is, is um, almost uh, 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 three times the incidence of uh, uh, with no testosterone versus therapeutic testosterone. Survival rate is 2.3 2 times greater with testosterone versus no testosterone. Um, low testosterone levels are, are, are is it, uh, associated with 35% increased risk for mortality. When they say low testosterone here, they're in this, these studies, they're usually talking about total levels of less than 600 for greater than, for greater than six months. Okay. So uh, high testosterone levels don't increase the risk of blood tumors, don't increase the risk of cardiovascular disease, strokes, or um, uh, blood clots. So theoretically, it should be okay, but I will look into it further, okay? Okay, that's good, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, a couple of the other things we deal with, kinecomastia, um, usually an imbalance between estrogen and androgen. And uh, the picture here, as you can see, um, four to eight months therapy of unregulated testosterone therapy. So, you know, Dr. Camarella or whatever his name is, the guy who's taken eight milligram or seven or eight milligrams of estradiol <laughs> and letting, let, and, you know, and letting it, letting his patients estradiol levels, you know, you know, you know, hang around 175, you know, I don't know what he said, what he's, what am I supposed to say to that? So aromatase, that's, that's your, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, Converting enzyme from testosterone to to estradiol. It's a cytochrome P one nine A one cytochrome P four fifty family. Um, it converts androstenedione to estrone and, and testosterone to es estradiol. It induces interleukin six, interleukin one inflammatory cytokines, um, and it's increased with mold inflammation, um, low testosterone, um, high insulin. Uh, traumatic brain injuries, 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, high prolactin, and glyphosate. 
So you, you get um, estrogen. Um, this is kind of the, 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 the way the world goes around there. Um, so it, we inject testosterone, it, it, it you know, fills up the androgen receptors um, and um, uh, also growth hormone. Um, and you get a, um, this is your um, um, uh, aromatase right here. And um, progesterone uh, will uh, uh, fill up the progesterone receptors. This is where you get your alveolar uh, differentiation. Um, so cell differentiation, the estrogen receptors will cause ductal growth. Prolactin will, um, you know, stimulate um, a, you know, sort of the whole world to go around. So this is just a kind of a schematic of how all that works. And um, uh, the aromatase is kind of a triple whammy. Um, estrogen stimulation is ineffective without anterior pituitary hormone. So you need your LH FSH stimulation. Growth hormone and IGF-1 are needed as mediators. Otherwise the breast tissue will not develop. Um, so think about that, right? So you need adequate uh, uh, growth hormone Oh, uh, converted to IGF-1. Otherwise, you're not going to get the gynecomastia. Aromatase in activity increases with increased body fat, um, increased sex hormone binding globulin. Um, sex hormone binding globulin binds to testosterone more than estradiol. It creates a relatively low, t low testosterone um, condition or a relatively, you know, proportionally high estradiol uh, condition. Same thing happens with hyperthyroidism. So hyperthyroidism and uh, elevated um, uh, estradiol due to uh, uh, either high sex hormone binding globulin or uh, administration of testosterone is kind of your, your, your triple whammy there. Um, other reasons uh, for uh, 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 gynecomastia or predispositions, overweight, um, alcohol, coffee, Tight underwear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you? Decreased body temperature, decreases spermatogenesis, increases est estradiol. Okay. You cut off the circulation. Okay. Other causes, um, medications, as our, our old friend Finasteride is there, cimetidine, tagamet, spironolactone, um, estrogenic plants and, and uh, grooming products. So tea tree oil, lavender oil, um, you know, your gym steroids, um, liver and, 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 and renal failure, you get decreased production of sex hormone binding globulin um, and um, uh, estrogen producing tumors and testosterone deficiency. So those are the reasons for it. Um, here's what you can do about it. Again, alcohol and caffeine, we need to stop that, lose some weight. If the patient has erectile dysfunction, you can use the estrogen blocker and astrazole, um, small dose, half quarter to a half milligram, three times a week. Um, with, without erectile dysfunction, they can use um, um, progesterone, 100 milligrams with some uh, diendylmethane, 100 milligrams once to twice a day. Usually two to four weeks will take care of it. Um, you might want to decrease the testosterone dose. You can use um, dihydrotestosterone cream, uh, 2.5%, or I, the one I prefer is actually progesterone cream that's more readily available. They can get this over the counter. Every drugstore has it. 5%, um, put it right on the breast tissue. Usually it takes about 30 to 60 days you know, for moderate gynecomastia. If they have a hard lump, and it may soften it up. That You still might have to operate on it. And then uh, sulforaphane, um, and, you know, broccoli extract um, will also help soften this up. So that's this is a, sort of the remedies here. So without erectile dysfunction, progesterone with erectile dysfunction and astrazole. Here's your references for that. Um, aromatase inhibitors. Um, these are the medications. So an astrazole, um, uh, exemestane, and letrozole. There's the doses there. Um, Off-label, uh, spironolactone and metformin actually act as aromatase inhibitors. Um, and then there's your doses there. And then I, I put this in because, you know, this, this is part of the part of the whole shtick there. This is um, not the case for not blocking estradiol. 
So aromatase inhibitors do have some side effects. We rarely see it because we use such low doses. And I mean, I've never seen osteoporosis in, in men, if, you know, for give, giving them, uh, you know, uh, aromatase inhibitors. But that's one of the big bugaboos they talk about breast swelling and breast pain. So basically what we're doing is we're inducing a, 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 almost a menopausal type picture here in these guys. So uh, body aches, joint pain, numbness, coldness, feel, you know, uh, uh, peripheral neuropathy, um, high blood pressure, strokes, mood changes. Do you see this? I don't see this. So uh, oh, I don't Osteoporosis, that was their big thing. You're going to induce osteoporosis. So back in the day, 20 years ago, we used to we used to block estrogens down to zero. I guess if you do that for long enough that, that you'll see some of this stuff. But I don't see any of this now. Usually our goal is about 15 to 25. We'll start, um, you know, uh, we'll give them the oral over-the-counter um, remedies at 30 and any over 40. I still use it. I still use a, a, you know, an astrazole. It's cheap. It doesn't, you know, it's a half a pill a week. It's a whole pill a week. Um, I don't have anybody that has any, really any side effects from it. We check them every three to six months. If they go down into the, into the, into the, you know, therapeutic range, we take them off of it. So we don't, we don't get them down to zero though. We don't want to do that. Okay. Um, and then this is what you get with estrogen deficiency. And it's the same thing as women, osteoporosis, mood swings, depression, heart disease, uh, vascular insufficiency, cognitive decline. They say decreased libido. I, I, I don't know about you. We, we patients who have, a, who have high estrogen levels, uh, estradiol levels ha have decreased libido. We get the we get the estradiol levels down to, into, you know, into the 30s and 20s and 30s and the, the libido goes up. So at least that's my experience. Um, osteoporosis, this was one of the big things they talked about. One year mortality post hip fracture in men is 37% versus higher than versus women. Um, and the aromatase inhibitors allegedly decrease a uh, lumbar bone density by 1.7% over three months. So uh, that, that's, that's the rationale for not using it. Um, uh, higher serum estradiol levels have lower cardiovascular risks in older men. Um, one milligram per day estradiol supplementation in hypogonadal men lowers blood pressure. Um, es adequate estradiol levels are needed to maintain uh, HDL cholesterol. I have seen that. So we have, uh, you know, had, you know, we let the estrogen levels rise and the HDL levels do go up. Um, so I have seen that. Um, Physiologic estradiol levels reduce a, a PAI, so that's another uh, you know uh, clotting factor, and it improves a cholesterol pattern. Um, and uh, physiological levels are associated with lower cardiovascular risks. Okay, cognitive function, estrad uh, this we know. So you know this we used to block them out to zero, and then we would get memory issues. So this we know we can it will increase adequate. Estradiol levels will increase uh, car uh, carotid uh, uh, artery uh, uh, lumen di uh, diameter by 224% over six months. Okay, so that, that you know, we, we do know about that. Spatial memory improves with uh, testosterone therapy and aromatase in inhib inhib in inhibition. Higher estradiol levels uh, result in longer telomere length, so longer, you know, longer life and Estrogen de deprivation strongly correlates with obesity, but isn't doesn't excess estrogen also correlate with obesity? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, this was one of the, the big studies that 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 all of those lectures that they had that they showed about not blocking estrogen. Um, um, every one of them had this study in it. This one right here. Okay. Um, I didn't put the, I didn't, where is it? It might be on the next page. Um, so what they showed you is uh, uh, estradiol. Um, you know, if you look at the details, uh, they showed you sexual dysfunction. It showed delayed ejaculation, premature um, ejaculation and erectile dysfunction it, with low estradiol levels. Well, that was true um, if it was low. But the um, if it was um, higher, 
Um, so uh, it, 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 it didn't happen. So down here and hip fractures, right? So if low estradiol levels in two to 18, you had a higher incidence of hip fracture. Um, but if it was 18 to 34, it was 3.4 per thousand. And, even, and it's actually a little bit higher if it's greater than 34. So when it's 175, I'm not sure what it is. But as you can see, as long as we have adequate estradiol levels, we don't get that. They didn't mention that part at all. All they mentioned was that you know if you block estrogen, you're going to get you're going to get the hip fractures. So, okay, um, and and this is just a sort of a, a summary chart. Uh, I'm not going to go through it, but if, if you want to know what happens with you know different uh, chemical reactions with estrogens, so here's a summary um, for estrogen in men. It protects uh, heart, against heart disease. Um, uh, it, it, uh, uh, high levels and low levels results in some respiratory distress. Uh, liver is the primary site of estrogen metabolism. Kidneys, um, uh, estrogen maintains phosphorus, calcium metabolism. It's nephroprotective. Uh, uh, it maintains skin turgor and stimulates collagen. It, uh, uh, low uh, estrogen levels will inhibit sexual activity and spontaneous er erections. Um, uh, 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 bladder uh, estri increased estrogen to androgens inc will increase a, a benign prostatic hypertrophy. Um, it, it, it protects against the irritable bowel disease, ischemic bowel disease, um, increases spleen size, preserves red blood cells and white blood cells, and protects against uh, GI um, uh, ulcers and, and um, uh, 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 GERD. So kind of a mixed bag. And uh, th those studies that I showed you about, it was this year, osteoporosis in men and estradiol, testosterone, and risk for hip fracture. So here are the references for that, okay? So they kind of, you know, it's kind of like a politician. They're, they give you half the story, you know? Um, other remedies for, um, uh, you know, reducing estradiol without using uh, the, the aromatase inhibitors, um, vitamin D, strontium, um, Iperflavone, um, you know, adequate, uh, you know, across the board uh, uh, hormone levels. Resveratrol, there's that resveratrol. We like that. Chaseberry, spearmint tea. Um, remember, we use that to lower testosterone levels. Deglyceridate and licorice and um, omega-3 fatty acids. So, N-acetylcysteine, chrysin, flaxseed oil, nettles. So, take your pick. Uh, testicular atrophy. Um, and so testicular atrophy, um, uh, when the serum estradiol levels are 20 to 28, the FSH is one to seven, you get adequate spermatogenesis. If it goes below 28, so here you go again, if we block, you know, block it down too low, that's where you get the decreased testicular volume, decreased spermatogenesis, DSF, FSH is less than one. Um, high doses of testosterone um, inhibit FSH, decreased sperm count. Um, and Theoretically, you can use as a um, sort of a contra contraceptive 250 milligrams every four days IM, um, it, it will, will um, sort of uh, uh, block sperm formation. Um, the remedies here are pretty much the same as gynecomastia. Um, uh, weight loss, uh, loose fitting underwear, uh, stop the, uh, uh, you know, co coffee and caffeine. Uh, without erectile dysfunction, the, the progesterone 100 milligrams at bedtime with DIM, uh, with erectile dysfunction, um, uh, the anastrozole, a low dose, 0.25, once three times a week with DIM. You can try HCG and reduce the testosterone dose. So those are the remedies there, okay? Uh, fertility, um, convert I, uh, the IM testosterone to transdermal. Um, and reduce the dose, um, a maximum of a half to three quarters of a gram a day. You can add HCG. Um, there's a synthetic ACG called o Ovidrol. Um, I've never used it, but it's there. Zinc, vitamin A, vitamin E, increased protein. And again, smoking, over-exercise can, can be a problem too. I have not heard of this, Dr. Yeah, Peter. so yeah, over-exercising, you know, can be a problem. Yeah, I mean, you hear, you've heard of women who, you know, they, they over-exercise, they end up losing their periods, right? It's, a, it's the same, same thing. 
Now, I'm and with respect to the synthetic uh, HCG, I've not heard of this. Uh, Ovedrol. Yeah. yeah, I've never used it, but you know, I I, I found it somewhere. <laughs> Okay, um, five alpha reductase inhibitors. Um, so, 1947, um, it was found um, dihydrotestosterone is the main culprit, is the sort of super testosterone. It shortens the hair cycle. Um, it miniaturizes hair. It sort of it sort of um, strangles the hair follicles. Um, in 1974, um, uh, this. Uh, a uh, gal from uh, Columbia, Julianne McGin uh, Imperato McGinley, uh, went to the Caribbean and found a, a, a cohort of uh, uh, children with a genetic 5-alpha reductase deficiency and their, and their parents. And um, they had bushy heads of hair and no prostate issues. <laughs> so, and, but they had high rates of anxiety and panic disorders. So I think we've talked a little bit about this um, you know the um, the the uh, the finasteride syndrome, where you, you can get the fairly severe side effects um, in a small amount of population. So the, the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone is what gives you your facial hair, your voice, your, your muscle growth, and prostate enlargement. Uh, rising scalp DHT is linked to, to uh, uh, male pattern hair loss. Um, but it will increase body hair growth. So, you know, when we give, especially women, we tell them to put testosterone, uh, on, you know, if they do a, a top, a transdermal, we tell them to change the site every day because they can grow hair if they put it on the same spot for four or five days in a row. And then, we, you know, we tell them they can't, uh, you know, it'll actually uh, uh, thin their hair out if you put the testosterone on their scalp. And that's because of the DHT. Uh, men, castrated men do not go bald. Uh, 5-alpha reductase inhibitor uh, show hair loss, but, uh, you know, with, with uh, slows the hair loss, but hair recovery is incomplete. Um, there are um, uh, three types of uh, 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 receptors uh, in 5-alpha reductase and receptors. Um, uh, finasteride blocks um, two of them, the, the number two and number three. Um, it reduces uh, DHT by 70% and prostatic DHT by 90%. That's that's finasteride. Dutasteride came out a couple of years later. Um, that's um, And that is uh, blocks all three 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, uh, 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 receptors, um, and that's 98% reduction in dihydrotestosterone. Uh, it's indicated for benign prostatic hypertrophy and androgenic alopecia, the finasteride. Um, uh, the dosing for prostate prostatic hypertrophy is five milligrams per day, and for androgenic alopecia, one milligram per day. Off label, females use it two and a half to five milligrams a day for hair loss. Um, you can use it with oral con contraceptives. You can make it into a cream. Um, you can use it for cellulite. You can add. Um, a 1% testosterone gel with 2.5 milligrams of uh, finasteride um, as a gel. You can have that compounded. Um, side effects, 34% decrease in sperm, 14% decrease in sperm volume after 26 weeks of use. Um, it allegedly, you get uh, sperm recovery after discontinuation, but there's, a small, again, a small subset about 1% of the men do not get a recovery from sperm. Um, sexual dysfunction, impotence, 5 to 8%. Decreased libido, 2.5 two to 6%. Decreased ejaculatory volume, 1.5 one to 3.7%. Ejaculation disorders, uh, half a percent. Breast tissue dysfunction, uh, anywhere from 1 to 2.5%. Uh, that's package insert. Laboratory changes, and you'll see this. So you need to keep this in mind. If they're on, you know, um, uh, Proscar or uh, what's what's the uh, uh, what's the uh, the one percent one for for young guys for hair, Pro Propecia, is that it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. They'll get a, an artificial increase in testosterone, estradiol, about fifteen percent, uh, vitamin D, zinc, um, insulin resistance. Uh, the one you need to keep in mind is you're going to get a 50% decrease in PSA. And so there's a, there's a, uh, 
there's a there's a whole body of literature on delayed prostate cancer diagnoses when you're taking this. So uh, just keep that in mind. If they're on if they're on um, uh, uh, five alpha reductase inhibitors, you have to whatever the PSA levels you get, you need to double it. That's the that's the true one, and you'll get um, decreased FSH and LH um, uh, uh, levels also. Um, you'll also get decreased insulin sensitivity. Um, that allopregnenolone, we've talked about that a number of times. That's why you get the ment, you know, the, the, uh, the psychiatric issues, um, and decreased GABA, uh, also from the allopregnenolone, and decreased um, semen. So there's three uh, types of side effects. There's the sexual side effects. Um, this is uh, decreased libido, decreased semen volume, loss of AM, and spontaneous erections, penile shrinkage. Peyronie's disease, sexual anodidia, they, they have no feeling at all, and loss of pleasurable orgasms. This actually happens in the younger guys, the eight, ages 18 to 43, much more often than the older guys, and with the lower dose at one milligram versus five milligrams. So at first, you know, when this we start started getting reports of this stuff, you know, they, they'd say, oh, that doesn't happen. How, how if it's five percent, five milligrams? How how come you have less side effects than one milligram? Well, you know, that happens to with a lot of medications. It happens with antipsychotic medications with tardive dyskinesia. The lower doses are uh, you get much more uh, incidence than higher doses. Um, low dose naltrexone is a uh, you know much different um, than than uh, high dose or you know the the uh, uh, prescription, uh, uh, you know, pharmaceutical uh, company, Naltrexone, is very different uh, effects. The general symptoms are basically um, testosterone issues and um, thyroid and diabetes. So listen to the, the effects here. Chronic fatigue and apathy, decreased oil, sebum, chronically dry skin, thin skin, tinnitus, Melasma, decreased body temperature, decreased HDL, increased glucose and triglycerides, increased fat, obesity, and um, uh, weight, and gynecomastia. Okay, so what does that sound like? Put, put two and two together. Especially decreased body temperature. Tinnitus, dry skin. Hypothyroidism, right? That's hypothyroidism. That's that's one of that's one of the effects. And the other one, um, gynecomastia, um, fat deposition, obesity, B, increased BMI. Um, those are those are side effects of uh, you know uh, at testosterone, right? Gotcha. So those are the things you need to think about. Um, and then you got you get neurological and mental side effects. So severe memory and recall, impaired uh, problem solving, decreased comprehension, anxiety, depression, insomnia, emotional flatness, anodidia, suicidal ideation. What does that sound like? Emotional flatness, anodidia, suicidal ideation. Um. At, at, isn't that can't that also be a manifestation of uh, a decreased thyroid uh, function? It, it can, it can. But what happens is, so remember what you're doing. You're block over here. You're blocking testosterone, uh, converting to dihydrotestosterone. Correct. Yes. Sir. Your five alpha reductase inhibitor. But look over here, progesterone. Your block. Your it goes to five five alpha dihydro progesterone, which then converts to allopregnenolone. Allopregnenolone stimulates um, your the um, your your uh, neuron your neurons to to produce GABA, your calming neurotransmitter. Look at the this look at the um, enzyme that that converts progesterone to dihydroprogesterone. Testosterone dihydrotestosterone, progesterone dihydroprogesterone, five alpha reductase. So the brain, the issues in the brain are very real. They're not sort of, you know, they'd say, oh, it was, it was made up. And uh, there's some evidence, I think, uh, that the drug companies knew this ahead of time and just kind of either just poo-pooed it or ignored it. Um, so there's, there's, there's uh, up to 3% incidence of severe um, psychiatric, um, you know, uh, 
uh, issues with uh, the 5-alpha uh, reductase inhibitors um, that, that uh, become permanent. Um, and and here's, here's your reason right here. Does that make sense? Did I explain that right? You got that? Do you have that? Yes, absolutely. Okay, all right. So you need to keep that in mind. So anybody who's, you know, if you have somebody with, with uh, you know, you have a young guy who's losing his hair and he wants, you know, he wants these drugs and they have uh, psychiatric issues in, 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 or depression, he, they have depression or an severe anxiety or, or, or you know, a, a strong family history, you really got to stay away from these drugs, okay? This is a comparison between a decreased GABA, which is what happens with the, when you block the 5-alpha reductase um, in, in the brain versus um, uh, psychiatric issues. And as you can see, um, they, they match exactly. Um, between 1998 and 2013, one milligram of finasteride, that's your Propecia for six months, age, men's ages 18 to 45, uh, 4,910 reported adverse side effects, suicide rate of 0.7%. 87% of them suffered from concomitant depression and insomnia. About 8% of them had suicidal thoughts and 15% of them completed suicide. So court uh, release in 2021, from 2011 to 2000, this was 2022, 700 reports of suicide ideation, four times the rate of the non-treated population, 356 deaths, 63% increased incidence of suicidal of suicide versus a non-treated population. And as you can see, it, you know, it, it, it was kind of on and on and on. Okay. These are the tests that you want to use. You want to use total testosterone, free testosterone, and either bioavailable, which you can use, which you can calculate, uh, or um, the free androgen index, which we talked about before. So, uh, you can also use salivary testosterone. It's best to do it in the morning. Um, the drug, the aren't in, the insurance companies say they want two of them, uh, and they both have to be less than three hundred, or you know, three hundred or two, you're fine. Two hundred ninety nine, you're abnormal. Um, check an LH to exclude secondary causes. Um, semen analysis if your fertility is an issue. DEXA scan of the, the the you know bone you know hypo uh, osteoporosis is an issue. Um, Less than 150, that's where you're going to get um, depression. Um, and check prolactin and pituitary MRIs, and then there's sometimes genetic studies, okay? 25-year-old uh, produces anywhere from 4 to 12 milligrams of testosterone a day, um, which is an average of about 28 or 30 milligrams per week. So if you're going to use a testosterone cypionate, 200 milligrams, one cc a week, 200 milligrams a week, you're actually almost three times, you're almost three, giving them three times the physiologic doses. And that's where you're going to get your elevated estrogens and dihydrotestosterones. This is a chart of um, uh, commercial products that are available. Um, there's some newer ones. There's testosterone undecanoate now is a pill form. Uh, the drug company who makes it uh, claims that there are no liver uh, uh, issues with the testosterone on decanoate. Um, it's very expensive. It's about $800 a month. There's also um, testosterone uh, 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 in, a, in a nasal spray, uh, but you have to dose it two, or three, two to three times a day. It's also about $800 a month. That does bypass the liver, though. Um, we you know, remember the testosterone pills were always, always, uh, were always a problem. Uh, Clomid is now, um, commercially only available as a, um, as a, as a brand name. Um, but we've been, we've been able to get it compounded at a, at a different dose of 45 milligrams. We have, we get it from Amazeo. It'll do a 45 milligram tablet and it's about $2 a pill. Um, so the commercial products are anywhere from eight to fifteen dollars a pill. Okay. So here's that testosterone on decanoate as a pro drug. Um, it's absorbed through the lymph system. It bypasses the liver. Um, they claim there's no liver uh, interactions. Um, uh, I I don't know. You know they they you know drug companies have claimed lots of things that turn out not to be so. We've always been taught that testosterone in the oral form uh, is hepatotoxic, and then here's the nasal form too. 
Okay. One set of actions, creams and gels, four to eight weeks, injectables, four weeks, pellets, four to seven days. Um, again, the oral issues are hepatotoxicity, uh, sublingual wears off quickly. Uh, the transdermal commercial products are usually for men, one to 2%, which are kind of weak. Um, and they're really expensive. Um, I usually see it, um, they can, you know, it's four to $500 a month for the uh, Androgel. Uh, they can get a insurance companies will pay seven, you know, they'll give you a $75 deductible on it. You can get a compounded one that is, that is pure, that is, you know, plant-based uh, 10 to 20% for less than $75 a month. Injectables, um, you know, most of the injectables, uh, testosterone ethanate is has a 10 day half life. Cipionate is a, has a 12 day half life. The, um, the VA, uh, was dosing them once every 28 days. Um, and then they were, they decreased that to once every 14 days. And basically you're starting over again. So it is kind of, kind of useless. We do it weekly or bi-weekly, um, bi-weekly you get less of a, a, you know, sort of a surge and fall off. Um, also you get less of an estrogen conversion. Um, the testosterone undeck in 08 comes as an injectable also. There's a 12-week half-life. Um, uh, it, it's made with castor oil. You can get an oil, uh, a pulmonary oil microembolism. Patients have to hang around for a half hour to an hour afterwards. You have to monitor their respiratory uh, status after you give them these, these uh, injections. They last it's a 12 week half life. So after a loading dose that these patients are, are given uh, injections once every um, uh, three to four months. So there's only about four or five shots a, a year here, but again, they're 800 to thousand dollars a shot. Testosterone propionate is a 36 hour half life. It's a short acting one. And sometimes we'll do a, a blend. We'll do a, a propionate, cipionate or an ethanate. Um, and we'll do a blend so they get a short acting and a little bit longer acting one. Dr. Um, Gordon does that a lot for the TBI guys. Um, you get a you get a little bit more um, um, you know upfront surge there. Um, he puts it all in one syringe. You can actually add an astrazol to the syringe also, which I don't do, but you can. Um, and you can get you can put some zinc in there also. Um, so uh, injectables, mood swings, um, you're going to get, with the injectables, you're going to get higher um, uh, 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 hemoglobin levels uh, versus um, the, the, the transdermal. Um, and you can get some estrogen excess better. Pellets, we talked about 900 to uh, 1200 milligrams. Um, uh, larger guys, uh, you know, the Avexapel people do 2000 to 2400 milligrams. Um, you can count on about 10 milligrams a day um, as, as a dose. So if you do uh, 1200 milligrams, it should last, it should last on average 120 days. So uh, our average is 1200 to 1800. Um, and uh, they come 100, 200 milligram pellets. There are 300 milligram pellets also, but they're kind of big and you need, you need uh, different instruments for that. Clomiphene um, increases LH and FSH. Uh, on average, 250 milligram uh, tablets per week will double your testosterone levels in about four weeks. Um, it does improve osteoporosis. It does not affect your um, prostate. Okay, and this is just, uh, I think I showed you this before. This was a note. This was a kid who got um, food poisoning when he went to Cancun. He ended up with Hashimoto's thyroiditis two months later, and then he ended up with low testosterone levels. So we put him on, he was 26 years old. We put him on uh, uh, clomiphene and uh, he was doing fine. And he goes to a, a, a an endocrine guy or no, a urologist, I think. No, an endocrine guy who tells him, uh, uh, <laughs> he, he, tell, he tells him, he tells him clomiphene has been used but it's not approved and we don't know the long-term side effects. And I think I already showed you that, right? The next, next, I think the next thing is here's the outcomes of long-term side effects in young hypogonadal men. It's, you know, it took 15 seconds to find this uh, long-term follow-up um, is, is effective and safe. Uh, and we've used it for years. I mean, we using this for 35 years. So I never go more than five a week though. Okay. 
and it doesn't it doesn't seem well you start getting side effects it doesn't seem to be as effective in older guys and guys over 50 55 it doesn't seem to be quite as effective yeah one of the things that i notice um is that um um so you can go up to 50 milligrams five times a week yeah mm -hmm. one of the things that we're noticing about clomiphene um in young males is that it raises their testosterone levels, Dr. Clearfield, but they're not getting the symptom resolution as they would get with testosterone. So it's making the it's making the uh, you know the numbers on the piece of paper go up, but they're not they're not feeling any better. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm not sure why that is. We're seeing that in a lot of patients. Do you have any thoughts there? Wait, what was that again? So they're on clomiphene. We put them on clomiphene. Um, let's say they're young, they're 24. We don't want to start, we don't want to treat them with testosterone. We put them on clomiphene and it raises their testosterone levels, right. but it's not resolving their symptoms. Um, so, it, you know, it, it makes the numbers on the uh, piece of paper go up, but, uh, you know, it's not resolving any of their hypogonadal uh, or symptoms or symptoms of antigen deficiency. And, do you have any? Do you have any thoughts there? So um, yeah, you know, it happens once in a while. Um, usually, it's pretty effective. Um, or, then we'll then we'll go to um, you know, if it's erectile dysfunction, um, we'll go to maybe PT one forty one, the peptide, if we can get it, <laughs> um, or oxytocin. Those are usually my next uh, my go tos after that. Okay. Um, I hate to do this to you, but I got to run. That's okay, sir. I understand. Okay. So. Pick this up right here next week. Yep. Mm -hmm. Same time. I'll, I'll probably Friday. I'll be, be fine. Okay. That sounds good, sir. Okay. So we're almost done here anyway. So, okay. Uh, give me some idea where else, what else you want to look at? Um, well, I, I will, um, you know, as I'm going through this fellowship program, I'll just. Uh, oh, yeah. How's that going? <laughs> that's, that's good. Um, you know, uh, um, I'm still being entertained about the, you know, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Smith's argument, uh, you know, uh, argumentation with the other presenters, uh, you know. <laughs> and then the peacemaker comes in, the, uh, you know, the, the pharmacologist, uh, you know, the little. Is uh, La Lavelle, is it Dr. Lavelle or is it Dr. Swedan? Dr. Swinan. Uh, Have you lost any weight yet? Oh. <laughs> the lovely lady, but really. Yes, I know. And you're in this kind of program. You think people are, hasn't somebody pulled her aside and said, let's help you? I mean, you're, you're lecturing in an anti-aging medicine school. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe she has a glandular disease. I don't know. That's possible. I don't know. Anyway. Um, um, so uh, I'm, my, my, my supplement company wants me to make some videos. So I've been working with them and I've, I've been playing around with some AI videos. So uh, right. maybe, maybe I'll, I made one last night, a short one. Uh, maybe I'll send it to you and see what you think of it. Okay. So, so they're kind of fun to play with. Um, they're not as easy as they tell you, oh, just do this, that, and the other thing. And it's all done in 30 seconds. You know, it's not quite that, doesn't quite go that, at least not for me. <laughs> but I guess you got to play with them a little bit. So cool. All right. Um, so I'll be in Houston the 18th. I don't know. Are you not coming? You coming? I, I just don't know yet, sir, if I'm going to be able to make it. I'm really trying though, for sure. So this lecture we're doing the, on the 19th, I'm supposed to do this in an hour and a half. And then Sunday morning, um, the 22nd, I'm doing the, the other one that we did, the, the, the basic hormone one, or is this the basic hormone one? No, the basic hormone when we're doing here, we did the Sunday morning. I'm doing the 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 supplements, you know, the, the supplements to manipulate the hormones. We we went we went over that, right? Yes, yes. I think we did that. Yeah. Okay. How about how's your uh, battlefield acupuncture doing? Good. I need to practice. Um, you know, uh, I'm definitely trying to you know get those needles because I want to. Well, practice. I'll try to remember to bring some needles. If you come to Houston, you can use my ears. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good sir okay all right 
Thank you so much. Take care. Say hello to your lovely bride for me. Judy's away and she left yesterday. I feel a little, a little eerie around here. I'm not used to her not being around. So, I'm, a, I'm a bachelor for the next week or so. So where, where, where did she go? She went to Missouri to, to, to see her grandkids. That's where Tina is. She's in Kansas City with a um with uh with Benjamin for his uh one of our boys for a, a national wrestling tournament. So she's yeah. in well, she's she flies to Springfield and then her daughter lives in a town called Lebanon, which is like right in the middle of the state. Okay. They're, they're farmers. They 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 teach organic farming. Oh wow, that's that's so, cool. Yeah, they 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 plant it here for us. Um uh, you were at our house, so you I, right? Yeah, you were here in July. You know, they planted here with she's been we've been getting herbs and tomatoes and all sorts of things. Now we got now we got moles. We got we got dirt being pushed up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, welcome to Reno, right? So how long how long will she be gone? Uh 10 days. So I, I'm going to get get to go to a real ballroom dance that, you know, she doesn't do that. So tonight there's a there's a real ballroom dance. I haven't been the one in a year. So. And it's the Italian festival. You know, she's Italian in, in, in Reno this weekend, too. So. so anyway, that's that. Um, I'll uh, I'll send you this when it when it's done. And um, like I, I have the the summary on for the. Uh, uh, the AI. So we'll, we'll see what, what we get with that. Okay. Okay. All right. Take care. Uh, you know where to get me if you need me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And let's see. Stop.